It's so wonderful to be with so many friends here today. Are you excited? God bless America. Charlton Heston once said, those dead old white guys who invented this country, they knew what they were talking about. So often all we need to do to inspire us for future fights is to look at the examples of the past. Our founding fathers and our former leaders, they charted a visionary path for our country. They created an exceptional experiment of freedom and a personal responsibility that would withstand centuries of storms and challenges. To keep what they built, we must be people who act on values and character rather than our personal benefit. So much of who we are is determined by how we were raised. Now listen, I didn't grow up in politics. On our farm and ranch, we didn't talk about politics, we lived them. We had a gun cabinet in our living room. We had a shotgun hanging in the back window of every single pickup and tractor. Our family vacations were even hunting trips. Long before I ever ran for office, I became a lifetime member of the NRA. My dad taught us life lessons. He taught us common sense, and often those were taught during our hunting trips. As soon as we were old enough to ride a horse, he would take us hunting. He'd pack us by horseback, sometimes 20 miles back into the wilderness to hunt elk. I didn't always know it back then, but those hunting trips gave me a lot of confidence. They helped me become a problem solver. For instance, I remember being only about nine or 10 years old, and we had hunted all day, miles and miles from camp in the high country in the Bighorn Mountains, when my dad turned to me and he said, Christy, hunt your way back to camp. I'm gonna go around this ridge and I'll meet you there at dark. And he disappeared over the ridge. Now, to a 10-year-old girl, this was terrifying. And as strange noises came and darkness fell, I had to rely on my instincts and my horse to find my way back to our tent. Now, years later, mom shared with me that my dad had followed me at a safe distance all the way back to camp to make sure that I got there safe. Now, before you get all warm and fuzzy on him, I also want to tell you that he made bear noises the whole time he was following me. <laughs> Scratching trees and growling at me. So, you know, he made sure I lived, but he wanted me to be lived scared. Um, but he made me stronger. And it also made me realize that I could conquer challenges that were put in front of me. It made me who I am today. And that's the first female governor of the state of South Dakota. Now with me today, I have my husband, Brian, who has been with me every step of the way for the last 31 years. Now I wanna thank him for all of his support, but also for the amazing family that we've been blessed with. And speaking of family, I've got three kids, two son-in-laws, and did you know that I'm also a grandmother? Not just once, but twice. Have two beautiful grandchildren. For those of you with grandchildren, there is no question as to why we get up every day and we fight. We get up every day and we fight for our values. Little Miss Addie, who is almost two, and Branch, who's just a few months old, they have brought us so much joy. They have brought us purpose. Now Addie, who, you know, soon will need them, I want to reassure you, she already has a shotgun and she already has a rifle. And she's got a little pony named Sparkles, too, so the girl is set up. There's a very famous quote that says, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Some would look at what's happening here in America today and they would call the times unprecedented. They would say unforeseen. I would say the exact opposite. It all sounds and it all looks and feels tragically familiar. We have been here before. A country that's arguing over policies, a public that's discouraged and dismayed by the lack of public discourse, violence in our streets and in our schools, families grieving their children, and loved ones that were destroyed by a deranged maniac for no apparent reason, and a White House that is so hell-bent on grabbing power and control of your life 
they will do anything and no, stop at absolutely nothing to take it away. They will even take away your last tool of defense. The Second Amendment is about deterrence. It's about ensuring the government respects the rights and the liberty of citizens. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of a people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Those 27 words are freedom's last line of defense. The founders understood deeply that without an armed citizenry, authentic freedom could not and would not survive. And how did they know this? What were their circumstances? What did they know about human nature and the temptation to seize power? Did they know how fragile freedom could be? What exactly were they drawing on? First, they were drawing on their own experience. The founders knew that the country would never have survived the Revolutionary War if the colonists hadn't owned their own weapons. The very first battles of the Revolutionary War, the battles of Lexington and Concord, started when 800 expertly trained British soldiers came to seize the weapons of the citizens. Those colonists, those Americans, were untrained. They only had their personal weapons, their muskets and pistols to fight back. One American, named Samuel Whitmore was 78 years old. Now think about that. In the 1770s, the average life expectancy was less than 40. As the British were retreating from the battle, Samuel hid behind a wall on his property. He ambushed the British all by himself. He shot one with his personal musket. He then shot two more with personal dueling pistols. All three of those British soldiers died from their wounds. For his heroism, Samuel was shot in the cheek, bayoneted six times, and clubbed repeatedly. The British left him there to die, but he refused to. He got medical treatment and he lived another 18 years. He lived to see American independence secured, to see the ratification of the Constitution, to see George Washington elected as the first president of the United States. And when the Revolutionary War was over, Samuel Whitmore would go down in history as the oldest, perhaps even the bravest, colonial militiaman. That's how the American people won the Revolutionary War. The Continentals challenged the infantry of the British Empire with the same firearms that they used to hunt squirrels and deer and to feed their families. Men like Samuel Whitmore did not ask for permission from their government to own their own firearms. They didn't need it. God gave them that right. Samuel defended his own personal property with his own personal weapons. He defended his own freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't have any idea what hard is. We don't have an oppressive foreign government that's marching across our land and threatening to take everything from us. But we all have our part we need to play to defend our liberty. God gave you those liberties. God gave you the right to defend yourself and your family. Our government recognizes that right. But we do not have to ask permission to defend it. Each of us needs to be as bold and as brave as Samuel Whitmore. It doesn't matter if you're 18 or if you're 78. Now, what else did the founding generation understand? They knew human nature. Writing in 1775, Thomas Paine laid it out clearly. With avarice and ambition have a place in the heart of man, the weak will become prey to the strong. The history of every age and nation establishes these truths, and facts need little argument when they prove themselves. Today, I admit the future looks uncertain. I would say clearly it can be found the answers studying the past and striving to do better. Let's be teachable. The National Rifle Association has leaders who stand in the vortex for us today, such as Wayne and Susan. We see them and their family walk through the fire for us, and we are grateful for that. But we should also look at headlines from 25 years ago and see what we can learn for today. I want to reference a Washington Post article that was dated June 9th 
of 1998. It summarizes where we stood then in this battle for freedom, but it also reflects much of today's reality. The Post reported the following. The National Rifle Association installed Charlton Heston as its new president today and loudly applauded his pledge to steer the organization back to the political mainstream from which Heston described as the fringe of American life. The choice of Heston was seen in large part as a response to public relations problems for the NRA. They had intensified recently because of several school shootings and rising calls for stricter gun laws opposed by the group. Now having the right messenger matters. You ask why I'm here today? Why do I boldly support the NRA? Now I probably don't look like a traditional NRA member. The media would have us believe that the NRA is only made up of old white guys. And all you old white guys can be proud and raise your hands. But there's a lot of other people a lot of diversity within the NRA. Well, let me tell you something. I may be a mom and a grandma, but I am the NRA. Our daughters and our granddaughters, every American is the NRA. I didn't know I could even be a hunter until I saw my grandma was a hunter and she was a pretty famous duck hunter. She was good. The Post in that article went on to say that Heston rose to power in the NRA because of the need to soften the organization's public image. Calling the school shootings a child issue, not a gun issue, Heston reasserted the NRA's long-standing position that violence grows from unraveling family values and weak prosecutors and judges. He also added a new twist. He called on the White House to acknowledge many gun violations go unprosecuted for lack of resources. He called on the Justice Department to start prosecuting every federal gun law violation in one major city. This, he said, would include attempts by felons to buy guns, which are rarely prosecuted except in combination with violent crimes. Heston pulled no punches in his first day as president. Referring to the Second Amendment, he said, those dead old white guys who invented this country, they knew what they were talking about. Now again, this article is from 25 years ago, yet that conversation is so relevant for today. What if prosecutors actually did their jobs instead of going on the political attack? What if the laws we had today were actually enforced? What if when tragedy happens, families gathered together, they bowed their heads, and they prayed for wisdom and discernment on how to heal hearts and minds, rather than to debate the methods by, used by those in society who do do harm? Our problems are not new, yet the threat is greater. Every time our country stands in the path of danger, it is always the patriots to first hear the call. Even the most common man deserves uncommon freedom. And we, the patriots, must be resolved to take action. Why do the liberals and Joe Biden want our guns? Because it will make it easier for them to infringe on all of our other rights. As the late, great Justice Scalia wrote in the Heller decision, history showed that the way tyrants had eliminated a militia consisting of all the able-bodied men was not by banning the militia, but simply by taking away the people's arms, enabling a select militia or standing army to suppress political opponents. Well, Biden hasn't done that yet, but why is that? Why haven't they achieved their goal? It's because of you. Because each of you and every one of you is the NRA. Because we have successfully held off federal legislation that would infringe on our fundamental constitutional right to keep and bear arms. We have kept our rights from being infringed. And in the last few years, we've seen government overstep its authority more than ever before. I've said that China didn't just export COVID to the world. They exported communist lockdowns as seemingly the only way of stopping it.
In fact, until South Dakota refused and was the only state that refused to issue any lockdowns, I don't know if political leaders even realized that there was another option. I was shocked at how quickly people gave up their freedoms. Politicians closed churches, so people willingly gave up their freedom of religion. Politicians said you couldn't gather in groups, so people willingly gave up their freedom of assembly. Politicians worked with social media companies to stifle dissent, so people willingly gave up their freedom of speech. I think the American people could learn a thing or two from the NRA. This is not a group of people who give up their God-given constitutional rights willingly. During the pandemic, I spent a lot of time outdoors. Sometimes you just needed a break from the fear and the paranoia that was going on on TV and in all the newspapers. My family would often go and relax at a cabin, go fishing, go pheasant hunting. One day I made a video of me shooting a pheasant. I don't know if you've seen it. I had turned to the camera after shooting a bird and said, less COVID, more hunting. And the liberals melted down on me. I was a little embarrassed by that video though because it took me three shots to drop that bird. Obviously, I was a little out of practice. I was making fun of myself. I needed more hunting. It wasn't my best day shooting and I shouldn't have been surprised when PETA and all the liberal media came unglued and came after me. I couldn't believe, they couldn't believe that I would say less COVID, more hunting. I was kind of confused by it. Did they want more COVID or less hunting? But since then we've had less COVID, so thank God. And we've had plenty of more hunting. In fact, South Dakota has the best pheasant hunting in the world. And if you haven't come to enjoy it with us, then you should. But South Dakota's greatest asset is our people. Our state motto is, under God, the people rule. And while enduring many challenges over the last several years, we have worked together to turn those challenges into opportunities. Our state is thriving as a result of embracing liberty and personal responsibility. We're setting the standard as the most Second Amendment friendly state in the nation. The very first bill that I signed as governor guarantees constitutional carry for all law-abiding South Dakotans. I signed legislation to block state and local governments from being able to use an emergency declaration as an excuse to infringe on Second Amendment rights. We We strengthened our Stand Your Ground law. We updated the definition of a loaded firearm to mean that if a round is chambered, making it easier to respond in situations when seconds count. And we made South Dakota the first state in America to not charge a fee for any concealed carry permit. In fact, we now even pay for your federal background check. It will not cost you a penny to exercise your Second Amendment rights in South Dakota. While leadership in Washington, D.C. fails to deliver meaningful solutions for the nation, our state will take action. South Dakota enjoys the strongest economy in the country, the lowest unemployment, and unprecedented economic growth. Make no mistake, freedom generated those blessings. Winston Churchill once said, never give in, never, 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 except to convictions of honor and good sense. Well, here, my honor and good sense require me to continue to fight for freedom, and that's what I'll do. As I look around this room, I see resolute faces prepared to stand up for honor and for good sense. You are prepared to defend our right to keep and bear arms. I also see a media at the back of the room who insists that we're crazy for doing so. They're prepared at times to shame us and to demonize us. I know they'll attack me for giving this speech and what I've said. But if they think that that's gonna stop me, then they weren't paying very much attention during the pandemic. It's not just the media and the big government. It's not just the media and big government that are attacking our rights. 
Now we've seen banking institutions go after industries that they disagree with. Have you seen that, that they're threatening to withhold funding, cancel loans, and holding them to a different standard than how the left is treated? None have been more impacted than those who support the Second Amendment. Well, not on my watch. I won't stand for it, not in South Dakota. So I'd like to ask Wayne if he would come back out here and join me on stage, because today I'm going to be signing an executive order to protect your God-given right to keep and bear arms from being infringed upon financial institutions. So we'll welcome Wayne to the stage. Today I will sign an executive order to protect the God-given right to keep and bear arms from being infringed upon by financial institutions. My executive order, effective immediately, blocks state agencies from contracting with large banks that discriminate against firearm-related industries. Wayne, in 1787, Thomas Jefferson wrote a letter to James Madison, and he talked about how committed he was to freedom. He made this point in Latin, but it translates as, I prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery. Today with this, I'm not sure, do you have a microphone, Wayne? You, I don't. You don't, I get to put words into your mouth then. You're doing great. Wayne is extremely grateful to me for doing this for the NRA today. <laughs> Got it. On behalf of everyone in this room, gun owners throughout the country, and all our members and firearms owners in your, the great state of South Dakota, Governor, God bless you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Just stay right here. This is executive order number 2023-04. The state of South Dakota Office of the Governor, I will be signing it on behalf of protecting those industries related to the gun and firearm industry from being discriminated against, against by financial institution, banking, credit card, or otherwise. There you go, thank you. Thank you. I'll wrap up and then we'll go. Okay. <laughs> As you leave here today, I want you to remember that quote that Thomas Jefferson wrote to James Madison. I prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery. May we all leave here today inspired by our history and the blessings that we all enjoy, as well as the burden of responsibility that rests on your shoulders. Never give in, never, never, never. Our freedom is in your hands. Thank you. <laughs> 